that blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power Let's sing that again for it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley oh, oh it's that blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power it soothes my doubts and i know the song calms my fears and it dries all tears it's the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power for it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley oh, oh it's that blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power praise god amen let's think about that for a moment when i first when i first touched the throne when i first felt the the flow of the blood that forgave all my sins that washed me white as snow my first encounter with the savior my first touch from jesus uh, hallelujah the first time i came to an altar the very first time uh, that he delivered me the first time uh, that i knew in my heart uh, this is what i want to do uh, i want to make him uh, hallelujah i want to serve the lord uh, the first time that you finally that you realized uh, hallelujah. Oh, I'm so thankful. hallelujah i'm so thankful that i know him today Hey, we take it for we take it for granted. We we think that it's that everybody knows Jesus. <laughs> that everybody has the opportunity to know Jesus, but it's not true. That's not true. Not everybody has an opportunity to know who Jesus is because it's up to you and it's up to you and it's up to you and it's up to you me to tell people who Jesus is. We're going to do something I don't, want, I don't want to say different because we never do anything the same. <laughs> but what's interesting about that concept is that in my research of most revival, the most places where revival breaks out and where people by the thousands come, come to Christ, come to Jesus, they have unorthodox church. <laughs> they have church that is not the usual. It's, they don't have the, the same set schedule that normal church was so it's okay to to be a little fluid and to fluctuate here and there amen i'm going to ask the ushers to come on up just continue to remain standing you can take it you're strong <laughs> if you can't you have my permission to sit down just remain standing we're going to uh receive the offering this evening because i don't want to forget about it and have to do it late later after the service. Come on up, junior ushers. Amen. 
I like that haircut. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> They're wondering who I'm talking to. <laughs> Amen. Come on up and give your offering. Smile. Smile. We'll pray after we receive this offering. Smile with a big smile. You're so glad to be here. It's summertime. Pepsi's winning. Pepsi's winning. I, I believe. How much? By four hundred and fifty dollars. OK, everybody, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Pepsi's winning by five hundred and ten dollars. Now that's Amen. That's not including I think what we have in here. Where's the Coke bottle at? Oh, I couldn't see it. Yeah. So that's not including what's in there, but Pepsi's winning. It didn't it didn't look good, but Pepsi has pulled through, and I, I told you I would do this. I would initiate the what I call the rushing rule, which means that after you find out who's winning and by how much, this Sunday I will give you an opportunity to make it right. <clears throat> I will give you an opportunity to make it right. If you would like to donate, because your team is losing, or if you would like to donate to make sure your team continues to win, that is up to you this Sunday. <laughs> it it will be it will be like a like you a blind donation. You just put your money in, in a box, and, and we'll count it up later. Put who it goes to, what it's for. Sure, yep. So. Just so you know, everybody wins. I don't want to see anybody getting mad, saying Pepsi cheated, Coke cheated. I don't want to hear any of that. We all win. Ushers, will you get me out of this? Pray a good prayer to bless this offering. Okay. All right. It doesn't matter. Well, let's pray together. Go ahead. You got it. Our Father, thank you for letting us have a good day, Jesus. I bless this offering and bless the people who couldn't give and people that who can't give, Jesus. Let us have a good Bible study, Jesus. Let us have a safe drive home. Amen. All right. Amen. You may be seated. Let you rest for a minute. And I, I feel, let's see here. I was looking around. Does anybody have a testimony tonight? I'd like to hear a, I mean, something that God has done for you, a prayer that, that God has answered. Go ahead, Sister Danielle. had prayer for my work and just that our chairman had passed away and they were coming for our jobs and the supervisor that I had was very negative and there's word that he used to go to church and he left and he's no longer looking for God um, so he was just a miserable person and you could see it and he treated his co-workers very poorly and I've been praying we prayed I got a new supervisor. I prayed that God would bless him out of my department, and he got blessed. And I'm I'm happy. Like, I'm happy that, like, all my people in my area are happy. So he's just the sweetest thing. And I told her, I was like, you're a blessing because I prayed for you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. We go ahead, Brother Sargon. Amen. To God be the glory for for that. Hallelujah. One more. I'll take one more. Sister Star.
we pray every Tuesday and we take prayer requests. Well, we have to testify as to what God is doing and what God has done. Amen. We need to encourage one another with our testimonies. I know Hannah didn't stand to testify, but we're thankful that she was obedient to her pastor when I said, invite those people to church. They'll come. They'll let us pray. They'll let us pray for them. And we want to keep Robert and I think Elena, Elena in prayer. What they were praying for was a, a baby. I just didn't, I didn't know if they, they told me I could say it or not. I didn't, I wasn't sure, so I didn't say it. But what they're praying for is the baby. And we know that God can do this thing. Amen. This is, this is something that God is known for. He's famous for it. He's famous for it in the Bible. He's famous for it in the churches that I've attended. I've seen God work miracles uh, with, when it comes to couples desiring a baby. So we're thankful that they came and, and they stayed. They didn't run away. <laughs> so we're thankful for that. Amen. Uh, would you stand? We're going to get into the word of God. After I get done teaching, I'm going to get out of the way, and we're going to pray. How many need prayer? <laughs> How many want someone to pray for them? <laughs> How many think they're perfect? All right. I'm telling you, we have got to learn to pray. And I don't mean in times of trouble. Every one of you know how to pray when something bad happens. Every one of you know how to pray when bad news comes your way. But I'm talking about learn to pray to communicate with God. <clears throat> Amen. Learn to pray for somebody else when they need prayer. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, and some somebody's thinking that I'm going to beat this, this uh, scripture up because we've heard it. Pastor has taught it and preached it so many different ways. Uh, I've mentioned I've got about six or seven, eight Bible studies on the same the same scripture. Well, God has given me another way. <laughs> so I want to I wanna read it and, and talk about it a little bit, and then I want us to pray and to seek the face of God. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, a familiar scripture, and you're going to have to trust me. You don't have the big screen back there. You're going to have to trust me. Hopefully, if you brought a Bible or an iPad or an iPhone or something that has it on there, you can read it from that. It says, and uh, some people are on their way, they're running late, they already text me, I know they're coming. Don't worry about them. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. I want to talk to you just for a few minutes, maybe five or ten minutes, and then I want to spend the rest of the time praying on a subject entitled, My People. My People. You may be seated. This scripture is a response to Solomon when he was praying and when he was dedicating the temple to God. Solomon, when he as he dedicated a temple to God, he said, I know, Lord, that this is not going to house you, that you are so big, that you are so great, that this is nothing to you, God. I know that this temple is not nearly big enough to house, to house the Almighty God, but it's just what you have called me to do, and you have called my father to, to, prepare, a, to prepare materials and do these things, and, and now I have built it, and we want to give it and dedicate it on to you. He said, as he was praying in front of the people, Solomon said, listen to their prayers and do to each one according to all his ways. I want you to understand something. Solomon asked God, he said, listen to each one's prayers. We serve a God that hears your prayers. 
that hears your prayers, that knows what you are praying for, that knows that you are seeking him. It's not just the church is praying, but you are praying. It's individual. It's personal. I hope you understand what I hope you catch what, I, what I'm going to try to throw down here, that it's up to you to pray for your family. That it's up to you to pray for your unsaved loved one. If it is to be, it's up to me, amen, to pray for those that are lost, those that, that, are come, that come into my path, that ask for prayer, that need help. It's up to me. Now, yes, we can talk to one another. We can ask each other. We can call the church. We can call pastors. We can call friends. But you have got to have a personal relationship with God. Solomon said, listen to each one, and according to their way, deal with them, God, each one individually. He said, even a stranger, even if a stranger comes and prays here at the temple, Lord, answer his prayer, deal with him according to his, his living, according to his prayer. Why? So that your name will be known amongst all people in all the earth. Solomon prayed, God, even hear those that cannot come to the temple, those that maybe they got caught up in something and they got captured and, and now because of their sin and, and now they're getting taken away to a foreign land, a foreign place, far away from the temple, far away from the familiarity of the church. Maybe they've, they've, they've just fallen into some sin. He said, Lord, hear them. Listen to them. And if they'll repent... Help them and deliver them if they'll repent. Sounds familiar. Sounds real familiar. Next, as he was saying these words, the Bible says that fire fell from heaven and it consumed the sacrifice and it consumed uh, all the things that were on the, the altar. And the Bible says that the glory of the Lord filled the temple. It filled that place. It filled that place, the Bible says, so much that the priests could not minister. Why? Because there was too much God in that place. I'm telling you tonight, I would love for me to come here on a Tuesday night prayer. And I haven't told no one, I haven't given anybody permission, so don't feel sorry. But I would love, don't feel sorry for yourselves, but I would love to come to a Tuesday night prayer and people are already praying. And people will come here early and begin to pray. Pastor, is it okay if I come early and pray? Yes. You have my permission. Yes. But it was so, the, it, the, the, the glory. I don't know exactly what they mean, what the Bible means by the glory of God. But it was something, uh, the Shekinah. I don't, I don't know what it is. Uh, but it was something uh, powerful, something awesome, something that filled that entire place of worship uh, so much that the priests could not speak the words. They couldn't do the thing that they were supposed to do because there was too much God in that place. I long for the day when there's too much God in this place. Less of me and more of him. Hey, man, we, you don't need, I, 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 I remember a man talking about revival, and, 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 and revival hit so strong. Uh, the man of God that was leading it, he came to the, the church, to the building where there was revival, and he got there, and it was so packed. Uh, it was people had come three, four hours early just to get a seat. Uh, they were outside, and, and all he could do, I'm telling you, this is the truth. Uh, there were so many people in the building. Uh, they wanted to hear the word of God, all he could do was walk on the shoulders of the men to try to make his way to the platform, to the podium. He walked on their shoulders because there was two, you couldn't squeeze him in there because they were so desperate for revival. They were so desperate for change. They were so desperate. He, get, he, he gets to the podium and all he said was, let's pray. And the Shekinah glory of God began to fill that place as each 
individual prayed their prayer. It wasn't a repeat after me. Uh, no, they wrote this down. They recorded this. Nobody was saying, Jesus, 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 Lord, 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 Lord. No one was repeating it. They were each saying, God, I need you. I'm a sinner. Uh, God, I, I've done this. I've done that. Uh, will you forgive me? Uh, will you wash me? Uh, will, you, will you help me? Uh, I'm addicted. Uh, I'm an alcoholic. Uh, God, can you help me? Can you do? God, I need my husband saved. I need my, my wife saved. God, my children are far away. They don't have you, Lord. Help me. About an hour of that, the man never spoke. Oh, he had to leave to another meeting, so he walked on the shoulders of men, and got out of there, and went to the next meeting. You know, it's it, <laughs> when people have their mind made up, you don't need a cheerleader. You don't need a great uh, woman of God or man of God to push you along and to carry you and to help you. Uh, you don't need me to answer questions that you already know the answer to. Should I do this, Pastor? Should I? What's better? Put God first. That's the best thing you can do in your life. The best thing you could do in your life is to put God first in everything that you do. Oh, above my husband, my children? Yes. Absolutely. What does that mean, Pastor? That means that if you want to be a better husband, better father, better mother, better wife, get a better relationship with God. He's the master of relationship. He'll teach you how to be all those things. There was so much God in that place. The priest had no room to minister. And then we get to verse 14, the opening scripture that I read here tonight. If my people, <coughs> God is calling to revival first his people, my people. Revival starts with the church. It's interesting that most revivals, I'm not talking about missionaries going to a foreign place. I'm talking about the church getting stirred and the church growing and the church multiplying. It, usually, it always starts with the members of the church first. They're the first ones to convert. What do you mean? How is that possible? Aren't they already members of the church? They come to church. They pay tithes. They give offerings. They, they stand up when they're supposed to stand up. They sit down. They they clap their hands, and for the most part, they have a form of godliness. But there was something missing always in their relationship with God. They were the first, my people. God said, if my people, his own people, which are called by my name, we have had his name applied to us in water baptism. My name is Gary Shane Thomason, Jr., Jesus. will humble themselves and have fun. <laughs> Amen. And, and and work more hours. <laughs> no, it's and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. You know that we we are so confused on what repentance is in America. We think repentance is saying I'm sorry. And you know that's not true because when you have a kid that does something to another kid, when a brother does something to a sister or a sister does something mean to a brother and you tell them to say they're sorry and they say, I'm sorry. Is that repentance? Your mom and your dad and you're standing over the three or four year old, you're telling them, I'm telling you right now, say sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Did they do that because they meant it? Because they're going to change their ways now, and they're not going to pick on their sister no more. They're not going to pick on their brother. They're never going to throw sand again. They are, they're, they're repented. They said they were sorry. Come on. <laughs> we know that's not true. You know what repentance is? What did the apostle say? He said, you ought to show works. Works worthy of your repentance. You ought to be doing something that shows me that you have repented. 
Repentance is a complete turn. It's a complete turning away, a complete turning around from a direction that you were going in. It's never picking that thing up again. It's never going to that place again. It's never sneaking again. It's never watching those videos again. It's turning away. It's not saying, I'm sorry, and then doing it again tomorrow and saying, I'm sorry. That's not repentance, saints. I, I hope this isn't the first time you've heard that. Maybe I've said it before, but, but we've got to get serious about repenting the right way. He said, in turn, from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their lands. The first converts in any homegrown revival are always the current members of the church. Always the current members of the church. This is why we have the Holy Ghost. Who knows why we have the Holy Ghost? And I'm closing with this because I want to pray because I need prayer. Why do we have the Holy Ghost? It's one reason. Say it again. Power over sin. Acts 1 and 8 gives us a pretty good definition. What is it? Mm -hmm. You receive the Holy Ghost so you can have power. And so that you can be his witnesses. How many here have the Holy Ghost? How many here have power? One, two, no. How many here are his witness? Will you stand? My people. We are his people. And he has given us the gift of his spirit, the promise to have power, not to just say I spoke in tongues and now I'm saved and I'm part of the church. It's so that you can have power. You know, I feel this. I'm going to say it. Some people will come to me or you'll just have this experience. You know, the devil's doing this to me and and, and the devil's doing that to me and and uh, I feel like I'm being tempted, and I feel like uh, uh, a loser. I, I don't, you know, you just, the devil's telling you all about yourself. He's telling you everything about yourself. He's telling you all about you and how you failed and how, how, how you didn't, you didn't uh, do what you said you would do. And I want to tell you something tonight. You need to take some time to tell the devil all about himself. Jesus said it like this. I saw Satan like lightning fall. Ain't no one ever fell faster than the devil. I, I just, <laughs> brother, you, you get it, don't you, Brother Donnie? I, I can't imagine the angels standing there at attention, and the devil, Lucifer at the time, getting ready to, I don't know, start his, his rebellion, I don't know, whatever he was getting ready to do, and then, whew, it was over before it happened. I can imagine the angels like, whoa, did you see that? Did you? I ain't never seen nothing move that fast <laughs> before. <laughs> I thought, I, Michael said, I thought, I'm the messenger angel, I thought I was fast. I never see nothing like you got to tell the devil a little bit about himself. There's a pit reserved for you. It's not for us. It's not for you. It's not for your family. It's not for your friends. But hell has been created and reserved for him. Power. That's why we have this spirit. So we can have power over the enemy. Power over the devil. Power over sickness. Power over situation. Power to be his witness. Amen. I know this was a little different tonight. 
but it's what I feel. I'm going to say one last thing, and we're going to pray. I just got to say it. Some of us have been, if the shoe fits, wear it. If it doesn't fit, don't wear it. Don't, don't wear it. I'm not talking to you. But some have had the milk of the word of God for too long. We have to get the meat of the word of God. The milk only lasts, only, only gives you so much nutri- nutrition. But there comes a time in your relationship with God and, and in your walk with God that you, your spirit requires the meat or it's always going to be childish and immature. We've got to grow up. Amen. Hallelujah. I hope I'm not <laughs> bringing somebody down. <laughs> but we've got to grow up. You have to realize that the world doesn't rotate around you. You, you know what? You need to desire the meat of the word of God. You need to crave it. You need to, it needs to be something that, that you want so that you can grow up. It's like the kid who's seven, eight years old and wants to drive. And then you got the other kid who doesn't want anything to do with it. But you got the one that wants to drive. I want to drive. I want to drive. You're like, you'll get your chance. You'll get your chance. You'll get your chance. Amen. We need to be like that with God sometimes. Lord, I want these things. I want, I want these gifts. I want, I, want, I want to see miracles. I want to see signs. I want to see wonders. I want to, I want to teach Bible study. I want to bring someone to you. I, I, God, I, I want it. I want it. I want it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Do we have any prayer requests before we start praying? Whoa, go ahead. Let's remember they lost Brother Mark. Brother Mark passed passed away today or yesterday? Last night, last night. What a great, what a great man of God. Prayer requests. You've got power. We've got power here. And authority, we can we can we can take care of that like that. So just come on up over here. We'll take care of that, Sister Russian. Yes, let's remember Heidi and her family, Sister Danielle. We'll work away this way. Amen. Amen. I, I didn't tell you guys this, but I'm telling you, one of the biggest revivals in the history of the, of the world started because some 16-year-old girl said, I love Jesus with all my heart. But she meant it so. <laughs> it was said with such conviction that it turned the whole city and country upside down. <laughs> yes. In, in Jesus' name, we'll remember them. Okay. Remember Sister Kim. Brother Scott. Oh, no. She's Brother Donnie. Amen. Let us know if there's if we can go visit her or, or if that's possible or anything like, like that. We'll go pray for her, pray with her. Anyone else? Go ahead. Uh, Sister Irma, sorry. Oh, all right. Remember Brother Malloy? He needs a healing in his back. Go ahead, Brother. Amen. Let's remember your neighbor, Kathy, Shelly. Brother Scott, Sister Star. Remember 
your friend, Brother Caleb. Okay. We'll remember that. Brother Star. Brother Terry. Duffy. Remember him. Anyone else? I man, there's a lot of I think we're I these prayer requests that are happening, I'm glad to have the Abregos and Sister Rachel's at home, but <laughs> I'm glad to have you guys back safely. Amen. But these prayer requests that you're hearing a lot of them, it's because faith is building. And we're starting to believe that God can do it. So that's why we're asking. Go ahead. Amen. Let's, let's remember the block party. Yes. Anything else? Because I want each, I want all of us to hear these requests so we can pray for our brothers and our sisters. Anything else? Brother Rushing, is he okay? I don't see him here. Is he fixing a roof? Is Brother Rushing fixing a roof? Is he <laughs> I heard a tree fell on one of his one of his garages, but we'll talk about that later. Any anything else? Anyone else? Ask anything. Ask a hard thing. Anything else? When my people pray. <laughs> Amen. Sister Star, I can't see you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Pray for Rudy and and Renee, Brother Donnie. All the, amen. Amen. Let's remember that. Financial need. I'm not afraid to say it. It's a financial need for Brother Donnie. God knows what it is. Hallelujah. All right. Let's come on up to the front as a church family. Let's kind of get shoulders, shoulder to shoulder here with your brothers, with your sisters, sister to sister, brother to brother. Church. There will be a time when we won't be able to do this because there will be too many people. And you're going to say, I remember when we used to be able to come all up to the altar to the front of the church. So don't get upset at me if I ask you to if get out of your seats and come up here because soon you'll be mad that you can't do it. <laughs> Amen. Keep praying, Brother Star. That's it. Start praying. Hallelujah. I'm not going to lead lead prayer to, tonight. I want you to pray. I want you to pray. Find your voice. Find your own voice. Hallelujah. Find your own voice. Each one, pray your prayer. Let's pray.